それではビル・アンドリュース博士をお迎えしたいと思います盛大な拍手でどうぞ I'm very honored to be here. I,、uh, among so many distinguished people,、uh, especially, I want to thank especially、uh, Dr. Nishihara, Mr. Nishihara, which is sitting over here, and Dr. Jonathan, or Mr. Jonathan Greenwood, for who's sitting in the back there, for hosting my trip here.、Um, and it is very honored to be here in Okinawa, which is world famous for having the longest living people ever. So. And just up my alley. Thank you very much.、Um, <clears throat> I want to talk first a little bit about who I am.、Um, and I've been in the biotech industry for many, many years.、Uh, I've always been interested in aging. Ever since I was a little kid, I've been interested in trying to figure out why we age. But it was always very frustrating to me because none of the theories on why we age made any sense to me. They all were related to the environment, whether it was our internal environment or our external environment. And that just didn't sit well with me because why would people that live in the North and South Poles age at the same rate as people who live on the equator if everything was related to our environment? And why is it that dogs and cats age at different rates than we do when we're in the same environment? Things just didn't make sense to me. And I decided a long time ago that there had to be some kind of clock that was ticking inside of us that controlled the aging process and declining health. So, whenever I talk about aging, I'm talking about health too, because the worst part about aging is the declining health. And I kind of think of、uh, longer lifespans as being a side effect of better health. And so, that is the focus. Is the focus is on health. But none of, so I decided there had to be a clock. That clock just hadn't been discovered yet. So when I first got my PhD and went into biotech, I first focused on cancer research, heart disease research, and inflammation research. Because I just didn't think of anything. Nothing made sense yet for the clock. I, I was looking for that clock of aging. And so <clears throat> I've, I've since. Obviously,、uh, found something that's related to the clock. And I was awarded second place for,、uh, it says National Inventor of the Year, but I want to make sure that's the United States National Inventor of the Year、uh, for the research that I'm going to be talking about today. I'm also featured in a movie, you just saw some excerpts from it called The Immortalist. And I've written a book called Curing Aging, which I'm not an author, but I just decided there had to be a book. To answer all the questions that everybody has. Because every time I would speak at audiences, especially like 10 years ago, nobody knew what telomeres were and there were lots of questions. So I want to make certain I got all the answers. And so a lot of times I just refer people to these books. Now, <clears throat> as I said, I've been in the biotech industry for a long time. And before I even got into the field of anti aging, I actually contributed quite a lot to the field. I was There at the very beginning of the days of Genentech, et cetera, I played very key roles in the discovery of a lot of these things that you can see on the screen here, especially initially human growth hormone.、Uh, one of my favorites was tissue plasminogen activator.、Uh, but you can see several things on this list. Beta seron was the very first drug ever for multiple sclerosis. So I was kind of in a wide variety of areas just because. I just was good at science. I was good at making things happen at the lab bench. And so I was involved in a lot of these things. But the thing that my biggest passion is the last one on this list telomerase. And so, in order to explain what telomerase is, we have to talk about telomeres. And I know most of you are doctors, and, but some of you aren't. Some of you are、uh, pre pretty new to this stuff. So I want to go through just a really basic description of what. Telomeres are. Telomeres are what I believe is the thing that causes us to age and that causes our health to decline, 
or at least one of them. I don't believe it's the only thing that causes us to age or our health decline, but it is a very key one, and I think it's one of the most important ones to solve in humans. And so, what is a telomere? Now, telomeres are very small things inside of us. In order to see what a telomere is, we need to zoom in on a human being. And when we do, those, do so, we see that a human is made up of 100 trillion cells. And most of the theories on why we age say that we age because these cells age. So at my company, Sierra Sciences, we focus on trying to study the aging process in the cells. And then when we find something that looks like it might be working, then we apply it to animals and then humans. So we focus on looking at the cells. Okay, it's smaller than that even though. We gotta zoom in even further. We find that every cell contains a nucleus. Inside these nuclei are found these blue things called chromosomes. You've all heard those words, but I'm gonna go a little more detail into what those are. I'm gonna zoom in on one chromosome, and we see that a chromosome is made up of two arms, a top arm and a bottom arm. <clears throat> Inside those arms are found this very, very long string of beads called DNA. The beads are called bases, the typical length of one of these uh, DNAs is about 100 million bases in length, long, length, uh, length. Very, very long. And to fit inside the chromosome, it's gotta be wound up like a slinky. I want you to think of this long slinky as a very long shoelace. And at the very tips of your shoelaces are found caps. And these caps, the role of those caps are to protect your shoelaces, because without them, your shoelaces will fall apart. Well, telomeres are the same things as those caps on our shoelaces, except they're on our chromosomes, shown here in yellow. And it's part of the DNA molecule that I would mentioned before. If we unwind that, that slinky in the chromosome, in the, in the telomere, we find that a telomere is about 15,000 bases in length. Remember I said a chromosome is about 100 million bases in length, so the telomere is a pretty small part of the chromosome. And it's 15,000 bases, at least when we're first conceived. And here's where all the troubles begin. When our cells start to divide, each and every time our cells divide, our telomeres get a little shorter. And this is the problem. And so there's so many cell divisions from going, going from a single cell embryo to a newborn baby, that by the time you were born, your telomeres have already shortened down to 10,000 bases. You're conceived at 15,000 bases, and when you're born, your telomeres are already down to 10,000 bases. Well, that's okay. They're still long enough to take care of you. But the problem doesn't end there. As soon as your cells start to divide again, you have to grow up, become an adult, lots of cell division, even when you've grown up, you are having um, <clears throat> Uh, lots of cell division, especially in your immune system, and the telomeres are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And when they get down to 5,000 bases, you die of old age. Our cells lose the ability to function, and we die of old age. Now, <clears throat> this is not a theory anymore. Anybody who works in, with human cells, hu not, uh, let's say non-cancer type human cells, normal human cells in the lab know that their cells can only divide a certain number of times because every time the cells divide, the telomeres get a little shorter, and when they get down to 5,000 bases, those cells, just like the cells inside of us, stop functioning and die of old age. Okay, let's go over that again. We're conceived at 15,000 bases, we're born at 10,000 bases, and we die of old age at 5,000 bases. There's absolutely nothing we can do about this yet. No matter how well we eat or exercise or do everything our doctors tell us how to do, we cannot stop this shortening. And remember I said I was looking for a clock? Well, I learned about this in the early 1990s, and I instantly recognized this as possibly the only clock of aging that's ever been truly discovered. Because when I listened to somebody speak, he had, told, he had mentioned to the audience that 
He could take blood from any of you. He could measure the length of your telomeres and tell you how old you are. And more importantly, he said he can tell you how long it'll be before you die of old age, just from the length of the telomere. I mean, this is the only thing that's ever been discovered that can, is actually that accurate a clock. And so I stopped everything I was doing, all my work in heart disease and cancer and inflammation, and I got onto this. And lo and behold, I found out that all my research now in this area was still related to cancer, heart disease, inflammation, and everything else on the planet. Okay, <clears throat> it's not just aging. We have now found, as I mentioned before, we're talking about health. We and scientists all over the world now have found that every single disease you've ever heard of has now been shown in scientifically peer-reviewed journal articles to be affected by the length of your telomere, or at least correlated. Some of them are, some of them haven't been determined cause and effect, but some have been shown to be directly caused by telomere shortening. And so we want to keep them long. It's almost as if when the telomeres start to get really short, it's like you fall off a cliff. You suddenly start having all these aging-related things happening all at the same time. And this isn't just because of your chronological age. People born with short telomeres fall off that same cliff earlier. These are kids that suffer from a disease called progeria. They, they fall off that cliff. They start getting all the heart diseases, cancers, everything that kills us when we get old. But they, it happens to them when they're 20. And it's all because they're born with short telomeres. And the short telomeres are caused by a mutation called lamin A which has been published in many journals now to be the actual cause of their short telomeres. If we could figure out a way to keep their telomeres long, these kids could lead normal lives. There's only 250 in the world at any one time right now that ever have this disease, but believe me, my company's interest would be, we'd be very interested in finding a cure for these kids. What I want to do is, I, I'm saying that every time a cell divides, our telomeres get a little bit shorter. But why is that? Why do telomeres get shorter? And so it, it involves talking about the fact that when a cell divides, <clears throat> you have a single cell, and that divides and becomes two daughter cells, everything inside that parent cell has to first be duplicated so that when it divides, the two daughter cells have everything the parent cell had. So everything needs to be duplicated, and that includes the chromosome, the DNA in that chromosome. And it gets duplicated by a process called DNA replication. Now, a lot of you know what DNA replication is. It <clears throat> involves leading and lagging strands and Okazaki fragments and uh, RNA primers. But I'm not going to explain it in that way, because it's going to make the point a little bit better if I use an analogy for DNA replication. I'd like you to think of a DNA as the top row of bricks on a brick wall. And when it's time for the cell to divide, that top row of bricks has to be duplicated by just laying a whole new brick row of bricks on top of that brick wall. So to use that analogy, let's get rid of the other bricks and we'll get rid of the cat. And now the cell's going to get ready to duplicate us, uh, divide. And so a bricklayer now makes a whole new row of bricks on top of a brick wall. Unfortunately, inside the cell, I'm going to point out that bricklayer is standing on top of the wall, and I don't think any of us would actually do that when we're, brick, we're making a brick wall. But this whole process, it's a long, tedious process. Remember, the DNA is a long thing, and there's, there can't be any errors because the errors will lead to mutations. But what we're interested in talking about right now is what's happening way over at the very tip of the DNA, the, the, the telomere. And we're going to find, because this bricklayer is standing on top of the wall, he can't put a brick in the last place he's standing. As a result, this new chromosome is shorter than the old chromosome. And I want to emphasize this because a lot of people think that telomere shortening is caused by something chewing it away. It's, it's actually just, it got shorter because the cell lacks the ability to duplicate the very end of the chromosome during DNA replication. So every time DNA, new DNA is made, it's a little bit shorter. Okay, so the cell's gonna divide again, 
The brick layer, again, is going to fall off at the end of the wall. The new chromosome is going to be shorter. And as I said before, there's absolutely nothing you can do about this. No matter well, how well you eat or exercise or do everything your doctors tell you to do, you can't stop this. I call this basal level telomere shortening. If you lead the perfect lifestyle and you have the perfect genetics, you cannot allow yourself, you're, you cannot get your telomeres to shorten at a slower rate than this. When we do the math and figure out how many times it can divide before it gets down to 5,000 bases and how often do cells divide in a human body, we calculate that a human cannot live beyond 125 years. Several papers in scientifically peer-reviewed journals have now shown that humans have a theoretical maximum lifespan of 125. Only one person, or two people now, have exceeded 120 in recorded history, at least. And the oldest was a woman named Jean Calment, who lived to be 122. But nobody has reached 125 yet. And, and I hope to do something about that. Okay, now, <clears throat> I said there's nothing you can do to uh, slow the rate of telomere shortening, but there's a lot of things you can do to speed it up. If you're somebody that feels you're not aging fast enough, I got a lot of good news for you. Okay, and I call this accelerated telomere shortening. And this is anything related to an unhealthy lifestyle. Obesity, psychological stress, lack of exercise, smoking, all these things cause the generation of free radicals and inflammation that actually accelerate the rate of telomere shortening. Now the good news is you can do something about this. You can lose weight, you can quit smoking, you can meditate, you can exercise. All these things, as I'll show you shortly, do affect the rate of your telomere shortening. The healthiest lifestyles you can do give you the shortest rate of telomere shortening. <clears throat> so, the big question now is how do we lengthen the telomeres? And <clears throat> this is what I'm all about. And the first discovery came from the fact that, as I've been saying, every time a cell divides, the telomeres get shorter. Well, it just doesn't happen to be true for our reproductive cells. <clears throat> when our reproductive cells divide, the telomeres don't get shorter. And this is important because if they did, our kids would be born with shorter chromosomes than we have. And their kids would be born with shorter chromosomes than they have. And we couldn't survive as a species because after about two or three generations, we wouldn't have any chromosomes left. So in our reproductive cells, there is some mechanism that exists to keep the telomeres from shortening. And through this research, I discovered, and my, my team and I discovered, an enzyme called telomerase in the early 1990s. This is shown, the green squiggle thing here is the DNA, shown as a double helix. And the enzyme telomerase is shown as a factory here. And what it's doing is it's adding new bases onto the end of the uh, DNA. I want you to think of it like a clock, as you saw in the video. You've got, <clears throat> every time a cell divides, the DNA replicates, it's a little shorter, the clock ticks once. Cell divides again, telomeres get shorter, the clock ticks again. In our reproductive cells, the telomeres still get shorter. The, the clock ticks, but then telomerase pushes it back a tick. Cells divide again, the clock still ticks, but then telomerase pushes it back a tick. Now, let's go back to that brick lane model. In the in this reproductive cell, that brick layer is still going to fall off when he reaches the end of the wall. But like an angel, telomerase comes in and replaces that brick. And as a result, the telomeres don't get shorter. Every time the cell divides and the telomeres get a little, the tip of the chromosome gets shorter, telomerase comes in and replaces that missing brick. Now this is important, what I'm about to say. If you just have a little bit of telomerase produced inside of the cell, the brick doesn't get replaced every time, but it does get replaced some of the time. And as a result, the uh, telomeres still shorten, but they shorten at a slower rate. So it's still good to have a little bit of the telomerase enzyme around, 
even though you don't have enough to stop the telomer shortening. On the other side is, suppose you have a lot of telomeres, a lot of extra telomeres. Well, what we find then is that the bricks actually get longer. So the new row of bricks is longer than the old row of bricks. And this is when we can start asking the question, is aging being reversed? And I've got some exciting data I'll show you soon. So <clears throat> I want you to think of this as a tug of war. We have shortening and lengthening going on at the same time. We have the shorteners and the lengtheners because the, t the DNA is shortening and then lengthening, shortening and lengthening, even in our reproductive cells. Now the problem in, in our not other cells that are, that are not our reproductive cells, we have no lengtheners. We, we just have this one-sided tug of war. And so the telomeres just get, keep getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Now, as I said, <clears throat> there are things you can do, like reduce your and, uh, free radicals by you know, uh, anti using antioxidants or, or uh, uh, decreasing inflammation. And you can get this down to maybe like two people pulling, which is what I call the basal level. But you can't get below that. So you always are going to have some shortening going on. But you can minimize it a little bit uh, to, by, by getting rid of your free radicals and your inflammation. But this still isn't what we're after, OK? I, I encourage everybody to do everything they can to decrease the uh, free radical activity and inflammation. But what we really want to do is we want to add lengtheners. The only way without mutating the cell to add a lengthener is with the enzyme telomerase. And so if we start producing a little bit of telomerase, we, we, ha we still have a tug of war. And notice the shorteners are still going to win because they have more people pulling. But at least by a little bit of telomerase, we're decreasing the rate of the telomer shortening, which should extend our lifespans and delay our declining health. Now, ideally, or getting better than this, let's make it a tie. Okay, If we have lengtheners and uh, shorteners competing with each other equally, then the telomeres don't shorten. And this is what's happening in our reproductive cells now. So we'd like to get to this phase, at least. But you know what I really want to do is I want to get to where we have more lengtheners than shorteners. And this is where we can start winning this tug of war and possibly reversing aging. Now, there's only been one method ever developed in any lab throughout the world that can actually do this. This is called gene therapy. And <clears throat> gene therapy has done quite a few things in this field. Okay, it has extended the Hayflick limit. It has reversed aging in human tissues. It has reversed aging in mice. And telomeres have been shown to actually be in control of all the other things, or several of the other things that are hypothesized or theorized to be involved in, in aging. So you've heard all these theories. You've heard about mitochondria dysfunction, uh, free radical oxidative stress, different things that cause aging. But none of those things have ever been able to do what lengthening telomeres has. All these things that I just listed, these are hallmarks of aging. And nothing that you've ever heard of, I don't care how much resveratrol you take or how much uh, whatever else, the other things they are, that, that you can take to cure your aging that everybody talks about. Nothing's going to do this. The only thing that's ever worked is actually lengthen the telomeres. So let me explain this a little further. So I, I know most of you don't know what the Hayflick limit is. But if you take cells, human cells, and grow them in a Petri dish, over time, you see that the growth of the cells occurs pretty much in a, a linear rate, actually, if, the, if you're looking at a log scale. But you see that the cells are dividing at a standard rate. Now, <clears throat> after a while, because of course the telomeres are shortening, you actually see that the cells stop growing. Everybody who works with human cells in the lab sees this. This is called the Hayflick limit. And it was discovered by Leonard Hayflick in 1961. And before that, 
Nobody knew that actually cells had a limit like this. And as we know now, it's due to the telomeres. And what we know is that if we lengthen the telomeres, like adding telomerase to these cells, these cells do not reach the Hayflick limit. This is actual data from my lab. We can do this over and over and over again, and so can every other lab throughout the world, and they can do it with almost every t single type of cell in the human body. So this is exciting. As I said, no other theory about aging can do this. Only lengthening the telomeres can do this. This is why lengthening the telomeres is really important if we want to be healthy longer. Okay, <clears throat> I'd also mention that we can now reverse aging in human tissues. And to do this, because regulatory organizations won't allow us to test actual humans, we grew human skin on the backs of mice. So some mice got old skin, some mice got new skin, then among all these mice, some were treated with telomerase and some weren't. Okay, so that's just what I just said. And what we saw is that the human skin visibly looked younger. Old skin that was put on the mouse, you know, would have its wrinkles and its age spots and everything like that. When we lengthened the telomeres, all that disappeared. It wasn't just a temporary fix of it. The, the skin actually became young skin. And to look at that even further, <clears throat> oh, and, and it behaved young too, because one thing that we know about old skin is it's easy to blister. But we, when testing these, this new skin that had, been, had the telomeres lengthened, the blistering didn't occur, or it was no worse than young skin. But we also looked at many different genes inside the cells, because you know we're all controlled by what our genes are. And we found that of the 30 biomarkers that we looked at, every single one of them was reversed, and meaning that their expression levels and stuff like that were at one state when they were old cells, and when we lengthened the telomeres, they became absolutely indistinguishable from young cells. Well, this is exciting. Again, no other theory about aging has done this. And I think one of the most exciting things now is that scientists have now reversed aging in mice. Now, we actually don't work with mice in my lab. We do all the molecular biology and the gene genetic work and stuff like that. But Dr. Rhonda Pennell, who is now the head of MD Anderson in the United States, did the research that I'm about to talk about. What he did is he created engineered mice <clears throat> that he could cause to produce telomerase or not produce telomerase at will. <clears throat> he let these mice get really, really old let the telomeres get really, really short, and then he caused the cells to produce telomerase by feeding the mice a substance in their food, and he saw that they got young by every method of, me every method of measurement imaginable. <clears throat> this is the press release that came out in Nature News. Nature is one of the most prestigious scientific journals in the world. They would not make some statement like that if it was just some quack or charlatan trying to claim that they found a reversal of aging. This was real. What they saw is, be, well, first of all, it's always important when you turn on, when you produce telomerase, you want to make certain it's actually working. They saw the telomeres get longer. They saw these mice could breed again. They, when they got so old, they couldn't breed. Now all of a sudden they could breed again and produce viable offspring. That was exciting. They, their spleen sizes and many other organs got bigger. Their sense of smell came back, which is a, a function of the brain. And in other studies of the brain, they found that the brain's function came back and their, uh, uh, <clears throat> the size of the brain came back, which is suggesting that maybe we're on something, onto something that might help with people who have dementia, such as Alzheimer's. Okay, I'm sure it's a lot more complicated than that, but it might be that telomeres actually play a role in some of that. And then they also saw a much increased survival rate of these mice that were treated. And what I'd like to do right now, because I think this is the most exciting thing, I'd like to show you a three-minute clip of Diane Sawyer interviewing Dr. Rhonda Pennell about this data. And now, eternal youth. Is it in a cage around the corner? News tonight of a breakthrough for some pioneering mice. But we always wonder, what does a fountain of youth for rodents reveal for humans? Here's Sharon Alfonsi reporting. I 
feel tremendous! In the movie Cocoon, it's a swimming pool that turns back the clock for a group of senior citizens. But now, researchers have found a way not just to stop, but reverse the aging process. The key is something called a telomere. We all have them. They're the tips or caps of your chromosome, seen here in yellow. This is what it looks like in a young adult. But as you grow older, the telomeres become damaged and frayed, and as they stop working, we start aging, experiencing things like hearing and memory loss. Scientists took mice who were prematurely aged, added an enzyme, and essentially turned their telomeres back on. You can see it before the enzyme, after. Their brain function improved, their fertility was restored. It was a, a remarkable uh, reversal of the aging process. Look at this picture. The mouse on the right has bad skin, gray hair, and is balding. But the one on the left had its telomeres flipped back on. And you could see that uh, essentially you now have a dark coat color, uh, that the hair uh, is restored, that the coat ha has a nice healthy sheen to it. Even more dramatic, the change in brain size. This is before the mice had 75% of a normal brain, like a patient with severe Alzheimer's. But after the telomeres were reactivated, the brain returns to normal size. As for humans, while it is just one factor, scientists now say by looking at our blood cells and measuring those telomeres, you can get a better idea of how well you'll age. The longer the telomere, the better the chances for a more graceful aging. But as for tinkering with them and turning back our aging process, researchers say we still have a long way to go. Sharon Alfonsi, ABC News, New York. Well, she said we have a long way to go. But she said that four years ago. I think we are very, very close right now, as, as you'll see shortly. But before I get to the new exciting data, I want to say that not only did Dr. Ron Pinnell show that these mice got younger, he also showed that the other theories, some at least mitochondria dysfunction and uh, oxidative stress, kind of were slowed down, maybe even abolished. He found that the normal hallmarks of seeing these kind of aging effects disappeared in the mice. So it's kind of saying that, as he said, telomeres are the kingpin of aging. And of course, we're speculating right now. We've got a lot more work to actually show this, but I'll tell you, I'm excited. I don't call this proof of concept. I call it support of concept. But I think we're actually stumbling onto something that might be really, really important. We just have more research to do. But let me summarize, we've extended the Hayflick limit, we reversed aging in human tissues, we reversed aging in mice, telomeres control, other theories, and not a single other theory on aging has ever been able to do any of those. So I am, my money's on telomeres. And I wanna, I wanna announce <clears throat> that we have licensed our gene therapy technology to defy science, defy time science, uh, as I had already mentioned, uh, Mr. Nishihara here is the head of Defy Time Science. And uh, so this is something that they are going to start doing first on Fiji Island, and then also here in Okinawa, as soon as they get through some regulatory hurdles that exist. But they, they want to do the efficacy studies and safety studies of this, and then start providing this as a, as a treatment for people as soon as they can show that this actually is working without having any ne negative side effects. And so this can happen really soon. <clears throat> but I want to say that the technique of gene therapy that they're using does not cause disease. Okay, so a lot of different gene therapy protocols in the past have actually caused disease all by themselves. This one doesn't cause disease. It, in, it only induces a mild immunological response. So a lot of times when you get treated with something, you build up a reaction to it and you can't be treated again. Not necessarily with this one, very rare with this one. Uh, it does not integrate into the chromosome, which is something that a lot of different procedures can cause, uh, result in cancer because of the mutation rates. When you integrate into the chromosome, that's a mutation. It treats dividing and non-dividing cells. So even our non-dividing cells like our neurons and our heart cells can be treated. And this method of gene therapy has already been in 117 different clinical studies using other genes besides telomerase. And, and so far, no negative side effects. This is looking really exciting. So I think this is something that's going to work. And I would keep an eye on Defy Time Science because I believe that there's going to be something available 
very soon, as soon as these studies get to, at least the studies are going to get started very soon. Now, <clears throat> that's, that's pretty much where I want to stop this phase of my talk, because what I really want to talk about is the doctors, okay? Too many people are dying, and too many people are getting sick, and their only hope is you guys. And what I want to do is I want to help you guys. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to come up with ways that you can help people from getting sick and dying. And so I want to go through right now, because you are going to have people come to you and say, especially now with telomere being the new buzzword, you're going to have people come into your office and say, I'm worried about my telomeres. What can I do? And there's a lot of people out there that don't know what they're talking about, that are t telling all kinds of things about what you can do to affect your telomeres. And so I want to tell you the actual facts, okay? I really, you know, I really don't know anybody that knows as much about telomeres as I do. So this is an opportunity for you to actually hear, uh, and, and, and I can answer questions later. But I want to talk about three different things. One is telomeres as a biomarker, how to protect your telomeres, and how to lengthen your telomeres when patients come in and ask these questions. And the first thing I want to talk about is telomeres as a biomarker. Somebody says, I want to know how long my telomeres are. What's well, not so easy, okay, is, is, you know, define what anybody else tells you. Now, theoretically, what we always hear is that when you look at a person's age versus telomere length, you pretty much see a straight line. The older somebody is, the shorter their telomeres. But I wish that was true, because when we actually measure telomeres, and look at people at different ages, we really see something like this, which is a lot of scattered data. Okay, so it's really hard, but it's not because these people's telomeres are the different lengths, it's because the methods that exist to measure the average telomere length so far don't work very good. Uh, despite anything you might hear, there's lots of companies out there right now trying to tell you, you they can measure your telomeres, but they can't really do that. Okay, nothing exists that really does that well yet. So it's good for population studies. So everybody can show you data where they looked at 100,000 people and we we're able to show that they can get a line showing that the kilometers are correlated with age, but it's not good for the individual. There's just too much scatter in the data. You take your own blood and you go get it measured five different times and you're gonna get five terribly different answers. So it's not good yet. The, at least, at least not yet, and I believe that there's some people working on some techniques that will be available soon. Now there's, when you look around to find a place to get telomeres measured, you're going to find there's about six different techniques that people use. But I want to point out that we now know, and it's always been kind of guessed at, that the average telomere length doesn't really mean anything. Just think about it, why would the average length of a telomere have anything to do with your health and aging? What's really important is how many of those telomeres are critically short, because it's when they get critically short that they start wreaking havoc throughout your, your genome and your cell. So it's been published now that what we really want to be looking at is the shortest telomeres, not the average telomeres. And that's what most of these studies do. It looks at the average telomeres, and, and measuring the average telomeres is pretty difficult to do. But there are two protocols that do look at the shortest telomeres, and only one of them is actually commercially available right now, and that's a company called LifeLength. So if you're, if I recommend, I do not get any financial reward for telling you this. Uh, I just want to spread the word about what's the best things you could be doing to tell your patients. If you, if you have a patient that wants to get their telomere lengths measured, send them to LifeLength, www.lifelength.com, because they won't measure the average telomere length, they will measure what percent of your telomeres are critically short? And that's the most important number anyway. So that's, that's all I got to say about telomere length measurement. Next, I want to talk about when, you, when, when a patient says, my telomeres are shortening too fast, how can I slow them down? Okay, well, let's talk about how they can protect their telomeres. I've already talked a little bit about it when I was showing you the bricklaying stuff, <clears throat> but exercise. Scientifically peer-reviewed journals have shown that one of the best things you can do to keep your telomeres long is endurance exercise. 
about at least 10 papers now have shown that the more endurance exercise you do, the longer your telomeres. Not because it's lengthening the telomeres, it's just decreasing the rate of that accelerated telomere shortening that I mentioned before. There's also the supplements for antioxidants, omega-3s, and vitamin D. There's scientifically peer-reviewed journal articles now showing that people who have been taking these for a long time actually have longer telomeres than their friends their same age that haven't been taking these things because they reduce oxidative stress and reduce inflammation. Smoking, big cause of telomere shortening. Get your patients to quit smoking. I know that all this stuff is things you already tell them, but maybe now with telling them that it's affecting their telomeres, you, they might actually start listening and maybe start doing something. So get them to quit smoking, get them to lose weight. Obesity is a big cause of telomere shortening. Uh, <clears throat> stress, and I'm talking about now is not oxidative stress as much as it is the kind of stress your boss gives you, uh, psychological stress. Caregivers of Alzheimer's patients have been shown to have shorter telomeres than their friends their same age that aren't taking care of somebody, just because of the stress. That's amazing. Also, adults that have been abused as children have shorter telomeres than their friends their same age that weren't abused as children, all because of the stress. So you want to find ways to reduce stress to keep telomeres long. Same is true for depression. I can't tell you how to reduce depression. You probably know a lot more than I do, but you've got to get your patients not to be depressed because depression has now been shown to cause accelerated telomere shortening. And pessimism. It turns out there's two studies now that have shown <clears throat> that if you're pessimistic, your telomeres are shorter than optimistic people. I mean, if you believe you're not going to live to be 100 years old, you're right. And it's going to be because your telomeres are shorter. Okay, so, keep, so people have to keep optimistic, and it helps keep their telomeres long. And these are things that you can do now. You can tell your patients all of them. You can tell them they can start doing this now. And if you start giving them data like their telomere lengths, measured by life length at least, this might be a way to actually kick them in the butt and get them to do something. Now, <clears throat> the three things here, antioxidants, omega-3, and vitamin D, these are the only easy ones to do. These are the supplements that you can take, because <clears throat> anybody can do that. But I have called the authors of these papers who did these studies, and I asked them, okay, so what kind of doses should you take? Well, first of all, the antioxidants is pretty much, there's so many antioxidants out there, and there's, you know, too much antioxidants cause pro-oxidant activity, and uh, too little, there's something else. So they say, essentially, just read what's on the bottle. On omega-3s, they say 1.4 grams of EPA per day and one gram of DHA per day is about the right amount to keep your telomeres going at the shortest possible rate. Vitamin D, <clears throat> they recommend put somebody on 10,000 units a day until their uh, vitamin D levels get to 60 to 100 nanograms per mil, and then drop it to 5,000. And 5,000 will keep it at that length. It just takes maybe a month sometimes to get the, the uh, vitamin D levels up that high and keep them consistent. So, so that's pretty much all I want to say on protecting telomeres. There's not a lot. It's actually pretty simple. But <clears throat> what I'm really excited about, of course, is how to lengthen telomeres. We've already talked about that with the enzyme telomerase. And <clears throat> the, the thing is that there's two ways to do this in terms of the supplement field. You can do the synthetic chemicals or you can do the natural products. I'm going to tell you, none of these work as well as the gene therapy. But gene therapy is not a pill you can take or anything like that. But in terms of a supplement, you can do synthetic products or natural products. And I want to, our strategy, this is what we do at my company, is we look for ways of, we look for chemicals or natural products that will actually cause telomerase to be produced in our side of our cells. And the, the idea is to think of telomerase is produced by a gene inside of all of our cells, just like the genes that give us our eye color and our hair color, there's a gene that produces telomerase. And that's true in our reproductive cells, because those are the only cells that actually don't have telomerase. So our reproductive cells produce telomerase from the telomerase gene. In all the other cells of our body, oh, and I should mention, next to every gene, there's a regulatory element. 
which is like a light switch. It turns the lights on and off in this room. Well, in this case, this regulatory element is a switch that turns the gene on and off. Every gene has such a switch next to it. In all the other cells of our body, there's a protein that binds to that regulatory element and shuts the gene off. And that protein is called a repressor protein. What we are doing at Sierra Sciences is we are testing hundreds of thousands of natural products and synthetic chemicals looking for anything that will bind to that repressor, will get inside the cell, bind to that repressor, dislodge it, and allow the gene to turn on. That's the basis of all of our research right now at Sierra Sciences. Well, not all of it, but in terms of the natural product and, and uh, synthetic chemical approach. We, we do this with uh, high throughput robotic uh, screens. So we, ha we have something called uh, the HTERT RT-PCR assay. And we use robots that can test up to 4,000 different chemicals and natural products a day. And <clears throat> one of the two natural products, and let me, let me talk about the natural products too. There are now two products on the market, one that was discovered at the company I worked at before I started Sierra Sciences called TA65, and the other was discovered at Sierra Sciences called Product B. These are natural product supplements that in my lab have been tested in vitro to actually cause telomerase to be produced in different cell types of the body. The TA65 has actually had some clinical studies done on it. I'm an author on some of them. And remember we were talking about the shortest telomeres. This data is kind of complicated, so it's not important to follow it completely, but I, this is an experiment with 12 different subjects. And what is being measured on that axis there is what is the length of the critically short telomeres? Or not, not, not what is the length, how many of the telomeres? What percentage of the telomeres are critically short? And so the black bar is before they took TA65, and the gray bar is one year after they took TA65. And you can see that in 10 out of the 12 people, the gray bar is shorter than the black bar, meaning that the number, the percentage of short telomeres got reduced. The only exception was five and seven, uh, the people five and seven. These turned out to be the youngest people in the study, and it turned out they didn't even have enough short telomeres to measure to begin with. So that's why that data is almost meaningless. But in all the older people, we saw that TA65 caused a reduction in the percent of short telomeres. They also saw all these different things. I'm not going to go over them all. I mean, the CD28 negative T cells was reduced, which is a big hallmark right now of aging. Uh, but several other biomarkers of aging were also reversed in this study. And, and in all cases, when I talk about study, you'll see the reference there, and you can contact me later. But if anybody wants to get more information, I do have business cards here. I'd love to hear from every one of you, and I can answer questions and stuff like that and provide you references to these studies that I'm showing. Let's talk about synthetic products. <clears throat> we have tested over 400,000 different synthetic products, and the strongest chemical that we've ever discovered is called TAM-818, telomerase activating molecule 818. This is actually, as, depending on who's measuring it, somewhere between 80 and 300 times more potent than TA-65. So I believe synthetic products are going to be a lot more effective than natural products, unfortunately. Uh, but that's only because we have the ability to design the, the, the synthetic products, where well, we can't design the natural products, because if we did, they wouldn't be natural anymore. But we have been able to get molecules that are way, way po more potent than any natural products so far. TAM-818 is the strongest telomerase inducer ever discovered anywhere that exists on the planet. And again, we licensed TAM-818 to defy time science. And they actually are doing clinical studies. They've already turned it into a skin cream uh, and called Defy Time. They've done clinical studies on this with a laboratory in Italy called uh, Abich Laboratories. And you can see those clinical studies at www.defytime.science. But I'm going to just show you a little bit about it. Uh, they saw skin smoothness improved. They saw forehead wrinkles uh, decreased. 
They saw skin firmness and skin elasticity improved. And they saw there was no toxic side effects. The Ames test didn't cause cancer. Uh, none of the other allergic reactions occurred. It's a pretty remarkable little chemical here. And it's found in a skin cream right now that is uh, slowly getting onto the market right now. Um, <clears throat> but think of that tug of war that I talked about before with the shorteners and the lengtheners. What we're talking about with the natural products and the synthetic products is still this. <clears throat> we have the shorteners still winning. Now, it appears that the shortest telomeres are getting longer, but the long telomeres are still getting shorter. But it's still better than nothing. Okay, so, we, so this is, wait, let me put it differently. This is a lot better than having nothing. Okay, so because we can do anything to slow down that rate of telomere shortening, even if, if a combination of taking your free radicals or your antioxidants and anti-inflammatories combined with something like TAM818, you can really do the best you can to keep your telomeres as long as possible. Studies are now underway for oral use of TAM818, but they're not completed yet. But it is available in some places right now in, uh, as a skin cream. What we'd like to do eventually is uh, get to this point where we actually have a tie. <clears throat> and again, you're going to find people all over the world that are going to tell you that there are things on the market that do this. They're going to say each TA65 does it. They're going to say your product B does it. <clears throat> but the truth is, this doesn't exist yet. There is nothing that is actually strong enough to stop telomere shortening, at least not yet. Now, what we'd like to do also is we'd like to get even higher levels of telomerase so that the telomeres actually get longer, so the lengtheners actually win this tug of war. And again, people are going to tell you TA65 and product B do, do this, but again, they don't. Nothing exists yet that does this. So when your patients come into you and ask, say, I want to get my telomeres longer, you know, they can go to some rinky-dink telomere length measurement place and they can actually measure them and see that they get longer, but of course the telomere length measurements really aren't working. There is nothing potent enough to lengthen your telomeres yet, okay, no matter what you hear from anybody else. But <clears throat> check back in a year. I think we're less than a year away from actually having something, and again, we'll be licensing it to Defy Time Science, who has become our pretty much standard business partner in our research. My company, Sierra Sciences, just does research. When we find something exciting, we want to continue doing research, so we market to people like uh, Mr. Nishihara's company, Defy, Defy Time Science. <laughs> okay, so I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about telomerase and cancer. As doctors, you've probably heard from a lot of people that telomerase causes cancer. Well, <clears throat> nobody, knows this, nobody knows the truth more than I do. This is all a myth. There is no clinical data at all suggesting that telomerase causes cancer. Not even is there no clinical data, there's not even any in vitro data that exists. There's, there was some in vitro data before 2005 that suggested that telomerase might cause cancer, but those authors have since published papers saying the exact opposite. It's just a lot of people don't keep up on the literature, and so they don't know the truth. But right now, telomerase, there's no data in vitro or clinical data since 2005 that even suggests that telomerase causes cancer. And there's been a lot of efforts to do this. Every effort to show that it causes cancer has failed, including, coincidentally, Dr. Ron DePinnell's experiment. He was one of the people that published before 2005 that he thought telomerase would cause cancer. He did that experiment to show it. He was, he was blown away when he saw that the mice got younger and actually had a decreased risk of getting cancer. The cancer incidence of cancer was less in those mice. For every study that suggests that telomerase might cause cancer, there's now a hundred studies that show the lack of telomerase does cause cancer. We already get cancer. It's because we don't have telomerase in our cells and it's because our telomeres are getting short. The bad guy here, the bad thing is short telomeres. That's the worst thing. I always say bad things happen when telomeres get short. It is awful. Bad, short telomeres, they cause mutations and chromosome rearrangements. When telomeres get short, just like the caps on your shoelaces, when they get short, 
your shoelaces start falling apart, so do your chromosomes. People are counting now, now with the advent of genome sequencing, people are sequencing the whole genomes of these cancer cells. They're finding hundreds of rearrangements, hundreds of mutations in these chromosomes. And can, muta cancers, all cancers are caused by mutations. Okay, mutations to genes that keep you from getting cancer or that do other things. So these mutations are causing the cancer. The short telomeres are causing the cancers. Also, <clears throat> short telomeres have been shown to weaken the immune system. When short telomeres, and your, when your telomeres get shorter in your immune system, you get immune senescence. Your immune system stops working. And the best defense you have against cancer is your immune system. Some doctors say that you get, seven, you get cancer seven times a day on average, but you never know it because your immune system is so good at fighting it. But when the telomeres get short, it can't fight it anymore. Another big thing is that short cancers cause, or short telomeres cause your cancers to survive. When you treat a cancer with some type of chemotherapy, you can see that cancer almost disappear. But because the telomeres are so short in cancer cells, the mutation rate is really, really high, and one or two of those cancer cells are going to mutate to survive whatever you hit them with. So chemotherapy is going to work a lot better if you keep the telomeres long, not short. A lot of people believe that the best way to kill cancers is to let the telomeres get so short that cancers die of old age. And I do have three drugs in clinical studies that I in, in clinical trials right now that I invented just to do that. But in all cases, the cancers are coming back. And it's because the the sh all the mutations from the short telomeres is causing the cells to find a way to survive that treatment. So you want to keep telomeres long. And then <clears throat> lastly, this is a meta-analysis. This is where meta-analysis means that the authors here studied all the other papers that have been written on the subject of telomere length and cancer. And their consensus is that cancers have short telomeres, which is saying the telomeres get short first then the cells become cancer. Keeping them long will keep the cells from becoming cancer. So telomerase does not cause cancer. The lack of telomerase causes cancer. And that's what's really important and people have to start understanding. Telomerase actually decreases the risk of cancer. It's the short telomeres that are the problem. Short telomeres not only cause cancer, as I showed you in a list before, they cause practically every disease you've ever heard of. At least almost every disease has been now published in scientifically peer-reviewed peer journals showing that they're correlated with telomere length. And a lot of them have actually been shown to be the cause of the disease. So we've got to keep our telomeres long. And that's the mission of anything, and that's what my research is all about, and that's what I hope to provide you doctors with something so you can help your patients. So to learn more, I recommend you read my book uh, called Curing Aging. As I said before, this is just a book to answer the questions that everybody asks. And <clears throat> also, I recommend that you watch this video, the movie, The Immortalist. You've already seen some clippings of it. But I go into a pretty good effort to actually explain all this business about telomere biology and that. So thank you very much. I hope you understood what I said. I want to thank the translators back there. Thank you very much. You have the toughest job here, and I know I'm hard to translate. Thank you very much. 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 So, I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to ask a question. If you want to ask a question, I'm going to ask a question. Do you have some questions? Oh. We can do questions. Okay, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let, me, let me say, I want to get everybody's questions answered. I thought we were going to do question answers later. But anybody, get my business card. If you don't have time to ask me, ask me. Because I want to make certain everybody knows everything. And I'm the best person to ask. Okay. What's, so he, needs, he, he needs a microphone. Thank you very much for your wonderful <coughs> lecture. This is Kentaro Tamaki. My major is a breast oncologist. Okay, so my question is that uh, 
Uh, you mentioned that there, uh, there are no previous study about uh, that uh, there are no correlation between, uh, there are no previous study about the correlation between the cancer incidence and the PTR mortality. But this is my hypothesis that uh, uh, this your pills help uh, cancer pro uh, longevity, I think. So, uh, so could you please comment on my opinion? I mean, Terumura, yeah, the, no, the, the cancer, uh, of course, the other question is that, uh, are there any uh, previous study about uh, using the cancer cell line for, by using cancer cell line and uh, examine the prolong, uh, using the pro your drug? Yeah. So, two very good questions. Now, did somebody translate his question? So, do you underst everybody understand the question? Okay. He's he's. You, you want to repeat it or? Is あの、先生のここ園で、えっと、癌の発生とテロメアの関係はないというような、あ、関係のOkay, so the answer to your first question, 95% <clears throat> of all cancers have already turned on telomerase. As soon as a cancer gets big enough that you can detect it, the telomere should have already destroyed it, but it didn't. So it had to find a way to survive, and it did it by the mutations caused the telomerase gene to get turned on. If it wasn't telomerase, it caused another pathway called the ALT pathway, ALT for alternative lengthening of telomeres. <clears throat> now, once a cancer has telomerase turned on or gone the ALT pathway, ALT pathway, it is immortal. By taking a supplement like TA65 or product B or TAM818, you are not gonna make an immortal cell more immortal. It's already immortal. And so, and it, especially if it's big enough already to detect. But what you are gonna do is you are gonna lengthen the telomeres in your immune cells, which are gonna help fight the cancer. And you are gonna do things like uh, prevent that cancer from mutating further, well, if you can actually lengthen the telomeres more than they already have. So I actually, I actually when I speak at cancer conferences, I actually recommend that if, if a patient has cancer, they should first give that patient a strong telomerase inducer to actually lengthen the telomeres in the cancer cells too, all the cells of the body, including the cancer cells. Then hit them with something that might that kill them, like a chemotherapy or something that actually poisons. Notice they take the telomerase inducer away, give them something that kills telomerase positive cells or poisons telomerase positive cells. Then when the cancer is gone, put them back on the telomerase inducer again. So <clears throat> I believe that the supplements are not increasing the ability of the cancer to survive because they're already immortal. Did that answer your question, the first question? Okay. Oh, I thought she was translating. あの、ご質問にあの回答しようとしてみますけれども、まずえっと、ほとんどの場合、癌細胞というのが、え、発生した時点では、つまり若い癌細胞はテロメアが長いわけです。そしてテロメラーゼも恩になっています。だから増殖
なんです。老化をしない、えー、つまり、えっとまあ、老衰していかないだから問題の困ったがん細胞なわけですね。でそれに818を、えー、投与したからといってそのすで、えー、に老化が止まってしまっているがん細胞がより老化が止まるとか元気になるとかっていうことはないわけなんです。逆にその818のようなサプリメントを摂取することによって何が起きるかといいますと免疫細胞が元気になっていくそしてそれが免疫細胞ががんと戦うのを助ける効果がありますので818などを含めたサプリメントによってあのがんがむしろ、えー、大きくなってしまうあるいは元気になってしまうということはないと考えております。Okay. The answer to your second question. <coughs> We have looked at a whole lot of cancer cells, and so have other people all over the world. And when we look at the sequence of their DNAs and stuff like that, we find that in all cases, the telomerase gene is turned on because of a mutation that's usually a chromosome rearrangement. So, like chromosome 5, where the telomerase has occurred, will break and join to chromosome 10, and now a new promoter is now expressing the telomerase. And so, that doesn't help us with normal cells. あのもう2つ目の質問の部分ですけれどもあの染色体以上の多くというのは染色体の,、えー、あの遺伝子部分の痴漢によって起きるというふうに考えておりますのでそれはテロメアが、えー、長い短いあるいはテロメラーゼがあるないとは無関係だというふうに感じております。Thank you. Very good questions. 大変あの良い質問だと思いましたありがとうございます。ありがとうございました。よろしいでしょうか。はい。大丈夫ですね。はい、ありがとうございました。There's a question. あ、もう、あ、もう、お一方。はい。あ、あ、Dr. Anderson,、uh, thank you for your wonderful speech, and that was a fascinating topic. Thank you. And、uh, my name is Mac Wan from Hong Kong Kong, and、um, we are working on some、uh, medical technologies. And I'm very interested in your uh, uh, the topic you've been having. And I have one question: is、uh, if I'm understanding correctly. Uh, the TAM818 is function as a、uh, sort of like a repressor for the for,、uh, work on the repressor protein to,、uh, for your body to produce the、uh, telomeres. Is that correct? It, it inhibits the repressor inhibits from the rep shutting down the、uh, expression. So <clears throat> TAM818 works by unblocking the systems that shut the gene down. Okay. So it's an inhibitor of an inhibitor. I see. Okay. My question is、uh, how does this TAM A18 be absorbed by your body? Is it working some kind of mechanism like a,、uh, like a hormone HGM,、uh, HGH, stuff, stuff like that? What, are you, are, do you have any experience in medicinal chemistry?、Um, unfortunately not. Okay.、Uh, do you know what the Lipinski's rule of five is?、Uh, you ever、I、heard of Lipinski's rule of five? I'm not very、five? familiar with that. Okay. <clears throat> There's, there's these five rules、uh, about designing a molecule so it easily gets into the cell. Okay, so every, every drug we test, we test only drugs that satisfy the Lipinski's rule of five, which means when we add it to a cell, when a cell is grown in a petri dish, it gets into the cell without any help from anything. Okay, so lots of chemicals do that. One of the five is have it be less than 500. Molecular weight, so 100, less than 500 grams per mole. Thank you.、Okay. Oh, is that more questions?、Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's a question and a n s w e r I'll try to do it in Japanese. But the question and answer is that 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 the question そういった作用があると伺いましたけれどもということであのちょっとだけその質問に対して修正が入っていや短くするのではなくてあの短くなるのを防ぐテロメラーゼという物質これが、えー、発生するのを抑えているものがあるのでその阻害している物質を、えー、どかす方法ど,どかす作用がを持っているというのが TM818 の作用であるというふうにちょっと修正が入りましたで質問に入りますとそれがどのように行われているんですかとなんかホルモン療法に近いような形なのかアプローチなのかその辺を知りたいというのが質問の趣旨だったと思いますで回答の方が
、えっと、そういうものではなくて、あの今まさに答えてしまったんですけれども、阻害する物質を取り除くという作用があるわけなので、えー、それそのものが、まあ、アプローチといいますか、そのメカニズムであるわけなので、あのだから、えー、副作用がないとか。とということになるんですね他の,あの化学療法とかホルモン療法とは違ったものということになりますでリペンスキーの5のルールというのがありまして500分子量、えー、以下でないといけないとか、えー、とそういったことがありますけどそれはあのここでディテールに入る必要はないのかなと思いますけどありがとうございましたあのとりあえずじゃあ質問終わりましてこの後はビル先生と最初のトークセッションに入りたいと思いますのでしばらく準備をさせてください、えー、ビル博士どうもありがとうございました皆さん拍手をどうぞ。